Thank you, everybody. All right. So uh, today I'm going to talk about off-grid plugins, updates outside of WordPress.org, which may not fully explain what I'm really trying to explain. I feel like a better title would have been, you know that thing when plugins update, and you get that little notification to update the plugin, like that little update link? But like, what if your plugin isn't in the WordPress plugins um, directory on WordPress.org, and you just like make your own plugin, it's just a zip file, but you still want to update it, have that little update link? This talk is about how to do that. Okay. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am indeed the uh, <laughs> co-founder and grand poobah of technology at Neutrino Inc. Um, I feel my title is self-descriptive. And uh, for the last 12 years, uh, we have been making uh, custom, very fancy luxury real estate websites. Uh, I personally have been slinging PHP and doing uh, web stuff professionally since about 2002, so pre-WordPress days. Um, and I, uh, yeah, we do use WordPress to build these fancy real estate sites. And I want to let you know all up front that all of the slides and all of the files that we'll be going through will be available um, online after this session. And um, I mean, going through a lot of code, I'm mean, going through a lot of it very quickly because I have way more to talk about than I can in 40 minutes. So if you're seeing stuff up here that doesn't make a lot of sense, um, everyone you know, has different coding abilities or, or what have you, um, don't worry about it. It's really not about the specifics. I really want to give you the tools to be able to do this thing if it's something you're interested in doing and why you might want to do this. Um, and if you want to really get in those details, all the files will be available. Uh, you can always come up and ask me um, later tonight at the after party. I'll be here all day tomorrow, hashtag both days. <laughs> and um, so, so let's get cooking. Now, I mentioned this real estate stuff. Um, so we have, um, our situation is that uh, a few years ago, we started using WordPress for our, these fancy real estate websites we do. And each site we do, it's a custom job every time. They take like a year to make on average, and every single client has their own very custom um, needs and functionality and themes and all that stuff. So we do a site for somebody, we'd build our own plugins and themes, but just for that one client, and it just existed just for them. So after doing that for a while, we're like, you know, let's just build a plugin that has at least the basics that are common on all of these sites. And then on each of our sites, we'll use this plugin. We'll just extend it with WordPress hooks and filters and things like that to make it custom for what that client needs. But this being the internet, things change over time. And we definitely need a way to be able to update this core plugin for all of our, our clients. But that kind of plugin doesn't really work, at least in my opinion, in the publicly available WordPress plugins directory, because it really only affects our, our clients. So um, that comes to, you know, what is an off-grid plugin? What are we talking about here? So an off-grid plugin, it's a plugin that's not stored on WordPress.org, but it still has all the neat features in one that is. So most importantly, this auto-updating, uh, also having robust information about itself, pictures, resources, stuff like that. Um, and then why is an off-grid plugin? Well, in our case, it's a plugin that just doesn't apply to the general public. So it's only a subset of, of people who actually could use this thing. People who use our plugin, they also have to have our backend system that kind of drives the data. So if a regular person just put this on their site, it wouldn't do anything for them. Um, another reason that I think most people are interested in this sort of thing for is you want to sell a plugin. And so saying, you're not going to get that plugin code unless you pay me 50 bucks up front, that sort of thing. Um, and then have that plugin able to update itself over time. And a lot of the premium uh, commercial plugins out there do this, like ACF Pro does that, Gravity Forms, DB Migrate Pro, all kinds of plugins that we pay money for and use on an um, ongoing basis. They all have this kind of system in place to update themselves, often with a check for licensing keys and credentials and stuff like that, which we will touch on. Uh, another reason would be you want to violate WordPress's terms of service for whatever reason. Um, you may or may not know that every plugin in their plugin repository um, ha has to be compatible with a GPL v2 license. Maybe yours isn't. It's also being checked by actual real humans, and thank God that they are. They keep the code quality up and make sure these plugins aren't doing weird things. Um, so if you want to make a plugin that's a new kind of YouTube video embedder that's also mining Bitcoin in the background, that's probably not going to fly on the WordPress directory. Uh, so that's um, 
another reason. So how do you do this? Well, there are three steps. The first step is you have to put together some kind of server that your plugins phone home to. So normally with a WordPress plugin, that server is the WordPress.org plugins repository, the page where all those publicly available plugins are. So you have to kind of recreate a version of that for your own server. When you are checking for updates in WordPress, WordPress is gonna say, is this the current version of that plugin? And it's gotta get that info from somewhere that's centralized. So that's the first step, is you need a server that has that information um, available. Uh, the second part is that in your plugin, you need to hook into WordPress to um, check it for updates. So when WordPress runs its code to check all the plugins and see if they're up to date and that sort of thing, um, it needs to be able to um, check your plugin and know what to do, uh, to know that that has its own plugin server and how to, to talk to that. Um, and then third, you have to fake out WordPress with some bogus plugin information. And by this, I mean that the process I'm talking about where WordPress sends information to its API um, repository and gets that back and knows what to update, what not to update, all that data that it's sending, the data it's getting back, that only exists in that little part. When you're hooking into it, it's Wild West stuff. It's up to you to determine all that code for how am I going to talk to a server? How am I going to um, get that data back? There's no real standard for that in WordPress um, right now. You could just have a random number generator to tell if your version's up to date or not and WordPress would be cool with it. So yes, there are indeed no standards with that. Uh, so here is a visual, just the process of how that, that works. Um, so when you have this kind of off-grid plugin, I'm talking, which by the way, off-grid plugin is a phrase I made up completely. If you Google that, I don't think you'll get anything. Um, I just thought it, it made sense. Uh, so if you have something like this, it's checking its own server. Uh, when WordPress tries to check for updates on plugins, it will listen to your hook first and it will try to contact your um, plugin server for that information and bring it back to WordPress to let WordPress know I'm up to date or I'm not up to date. And there's a couple hooks um, in there that are really small. Um, site transient update plugins is the one that just checks if the version is higher or not than what you have already. Um, and then plugins API is the one, there's another hook that actually shows when you view a plugin's details in WordPress, you like a little pop-up window thing that has all the information about it, how to install that sort of thing. Um, that's an API hook that gets that information as well. Um, so it does any of your custom code first, goes back to WordPress, then it runs it through for all the other plugins in one shot to api.wordpress.org is what actually stores that um, information for regular plugins. So there are a few solutions for this. Now I found, looking through this, that there's really not a lot of information about this online. Hence this talk, hence the last two months of my life, um, part time. So the first one I found is this quick and dirty solution that we'll cover, and it's really just a real basic way to, to pull that off. So if all you wanna do is you know, just have a plugin and be able to update it, but you're not worried about bells and whistles and all this stuff, this is, um, we'll go over it in just a moment. Um, this, this is a quick and dirty way to do it. Um, there's another way where if you're more comfortable with just keeping everything in like a WordPress kind of world, um, that server part that I'm talking about um, can be a WordPress site itself. And that server can maintain all your plugins and information, what's up to date, what's not. And so all the WordPress sites out there running your plugin, we'll talk to this WordPress server back and forth. We'll cover that. Um, there's also a great way if you're using the Easy Digital Downloads plugin and you got 200 bucks, you can buy this software licensing extension, which if you are curious about writing a, um, a commercial plugin, you want people to pay money for and keep it updated and have things like um, product keys and stuff like that to make sure licenses are up to date. This is totally the way to go, um, in my opinion. It's all in WordPress. Uh, it's also where it's, it's uh, WordPress server, WordPress install you set up as a server. Um, and it is, um, it is very, very well put together, in my opinion. Uh, and then the last way is my way practicing for karaoke tonight. Um, so I went through kind of all these different solutions and, and some other ones, and I kind of came up with um, my own version that um, not only 
keeps the um, code overhead down, which is important to me, um, but also utilizes, I was talking about there's a lot of Wild West stuff. Well, I really try to keep things as um, consistent as possible with um, stuff that WordPress already does. Like all the stuff that you would do to write a plugin for the plugin directory on WordPress.org, to keep all that stuff the same and utilize that to fuel this process. Without further ado, it is code time. <laughs> Not actually me writing a lot of code, I'm just gonna be looking at a lot of code. Um, so let me do a quick little magic trick on my computer here. All right, bingo. So the first thing we need to do, of course, when we're talking about plugins, is we need some kind of plugin to um, use as an example. So I happen to write a little plugin just for this. Um, it is called R matey, and it will indeed make your website piratical by converting the letter R into a more seaworthy R. And so let's give that plugin a whirl. Here is a demo WordPress site, uh, just some dummy content loaded in. And if I hit refresh, you will see, oh, whoops, I did not activate the plugin. Activate the plugin first, that's important. Hop back over, this way, refresh. There we go, that's more like it. However, I can see some flaws in this plugin. You know, pirates are more sophisticated than this. They don't just say R, they say other things too. They say I. Um, also, this is just doing a blind search replace. This um, post class link thing here, if I look at that, it's replacing the HTML code. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's like, Target equals underscore blank. <laughs> That's no good. So we should make an update to this plugin. And, uh, and let's push this thing out to everyone running this, this um, obviously premium plugin. So <laughs> the first thing we need to do here, um, I'm just gonna show you the code. Now this is just um, basically um, this one file, this rmat.php is, is really the whole, whole plugin. Um, and it's just doing the search replace thing and I have a variable for the version. Is that showing up all right? Yes, I can. This way. How's that? All right. All right, so you know, I'm keeping track of the version and a couple other variables. Um, one thing that I do wanna point out as well is that um, in this plugin, as in any plugin that you would submit to the, the real plugins directory, um, there is some information up at the top about this plugin, just some header information about what the name is, the URLs, versions, stuff like that. Um, and there's also a readme.txt file. The readme file is used by the plugins directory to really supply all that stuff that you see on those plugin pages. So the, um, um, the description about it, how to install it, frequently asked questions, it's basically a markdown file. Um, and uh, there is a lot of documentation on how to create this on the WordPress um, um, online developer plugin handbook, which is a fantastic resource. So I just wanna make that note and keep that in mind. All right, so back to our plugin. Um, I am going to, um, I've already put in the code here that will use this quick and dirty um, method. Let me just load that sucker up here so we can take a look at it. This is just some person's GitHub repo that they're trying to solve this same problem and they, um, they put together this code. They have really two files. One is a file that you include in your plugin, this WP auto update PHP. You include that in your plugin. That tells your plugin how to talk to this server thing. And then they have the server thing, which is what you set up on some URL out there. And that's gonna keep all the information on what the current version is and provide the latest files, that sort of thing. So um, real quickly, you, know, you, you would just include this file in your plugin. You would um, say new class and you pass in some information of the current version the remote path, that's the full URL to the server we keep talking about, and some other information, um, the plugin slug, uh, license information if you wanna do that, and so on. So that's the stuff that goes in the plugin to make this connection. Now the server is just this, like 30-ish lines of PHP code. And um, you would just upload this somewhere on the web, say updates.armyhearty.com or something, um, and this one PHP file, 
it's very lean. It just has hard coded in it. Um, it's going to receive a variable for um, called action, and if it has the word version come over, it's going to spit out 1.1, and that's just typed out. It's hard coded in, so that's that's as advanced as this kind of code is. If it goes for info, now info, that's the one that has all the more detailed version um, of the um, um, plugin information. So that has some more information that can be shown there. Uh, and then lastly, it just in this case, if it doesn't get anything, it's just going to spit out the zip file of this particular plugin. So we have done that here. Uh, we are including that file right there, and we are instantiating it with the version of this and the full URL to the um, plugin server. And then this tricky little plugin base name underscore file thing, that's a, a little trick. Um, that's actually a WordPress um, function, plugin base name, to create what WordPress recognizes as the plugin name for whatever file this is that you're, you're in. And I am in the plugin file, so that's how it comes out. Um, so now I've uncommented this code. Let's go and hit refresh in our admin area. I have just hit refresh, and nothing has changed. And that is because WordPress is smart and it caches all of its requests. It says, you know, I just checked for all which plugins are up to date like a couple minutes ago. I'm not going to check it again for, I'm not quite sure how long the cache lasts, like an hour or something. So um, if you're in this situation, it, what it should have done is it should have shown that little update button. Uh, so you can give WordPress a little kick in the pants and force it to update if you go to dashboard updates and hit check again. It tells you the last time it checked. And voila, now it is indeed making that connection to our server. Our server's talking back to it and it is telling it um, what the you know, updated version is. Let me hop back to our plugins page. And then you get this familiar, oh, there's a new version that's available. Hey, you know, let's check out the details. I do want to check out the details. Let's hit that. And so we'll see, all right, well, there's the change log, and there's some information that was last updated five days ago. It's compatible with this, and that's, um, that's pretty cool. And that's all coming from that info request um, that's being set in the server. Now, if I were to compare that to, say, a Kismet, like a real plugin, I have a lot more stuff showing there. I've got banners, I've got reviews and ratings and all kinds of crazy stuff. A lot of these have screenshots, and I want all of that. Um, but this little scrappy 30-line piece of code is not going to do that. Um, but let's do the update. There was a little trick I learned testing out my presentation where I got to close out PHP Storm for this to actually work. Uh, <laughs> so I will hit update now, and updated. And you'll see right there, version 1.1.0. And if I refresh here, you'll see that all of my R's are a little more sophisticated now. Look, we've got G's and H's. R. And it says, I, so says Davy Jones at the bottom. <laughs> all right, well done. So that is just a real quick, scrappy way to, to do that. I want to make a quick note on versioning, by the way. So you'll notice that all of these plugins, mine excluded, that are real WordPress plugins, um, have this like version you know, 1.1.1 kind of thing. It's not like 1.0 or 1.fish or anything like that. And they are actually all adhering to a, a standard called semantic versioning, which is online at semver.org. Also a vocal exercise. And uh, this is um, important. I believe that WordPress follows these rules, but I know for sure that when it does the, um, the plugin comparisons, when it's comparing one version to another, um, that it does use this criteria. And so you might think, oh, how hard could it be to compare some numbers? Well, 2.1.0 is different than, uh, or 2.1.1 is different than 2.10.1. Right? Which one would be higher? Which one would be lower? If I'm a computer, I don't know. But it's following this pattern, um, and uh, which actually corresponds to a, um, a PHP function, which is version compare. And if you look in the WordPress code, it's just straight up using this PHP function, which follows those rules. And so um, we should all be using that versioning uh, information as well. So, um, so that was the first example. I'm going to go to the second example now, which is our um, WordPress-based solution. 
So hold on here, I'm going to just delete. I have on my left here all of the plugin files, which I'm deleting. And I have a preloaded example two of the second solution. I will now copy these. I should note too, that example that we were just looking at, the total file size, with, even with their included code that um, that example gave us, was something like, like 27K or 30K or something like that. This next solution that we're looking at, which also provides a file for you to include in your, your code to talk to its server and all that, is a bit more, um, it's, it's bigger. Um, if I look at that, it says it's 336K. So it's an extra 300K or so on top of your, whatever your other file size is, which is kind of silly considering this is a 4K plugin, but um, I think this is still worth uh, checking out. So let's look at that. Now it is only by coincidence that I even found the solution, to be honest. You'll see that this plugin, which this is, this is, so this is a plugin that you install on a, um, on a WordPress site that will become your plugin server out there on the web. And uh, so you install this plugin. This plugin was last updated three weeks ago. Um, it is pretty new. Um, to be honest, there's some bugs in it. Um, but it does work, and so, and it does have some nice features. You can handle all the stuff in the, in the GUI admin interface. You can change the packages. You can tap into another plugin, which is unrelated to this one, called Software License Manager, which can handle uh, licensing keys and things like that. Um, you can also set it to pull your um, plugin zip files from a remote source. So. Normally, you would upload those files to the server, but maybe you have a process where you're making your plugin and it's all stored on GitHub or Amazon or something like that. So you could configure this to say, pull those files straight from GitHub uh, when there's an update, and it'll actually ping and check for updates and that sort of thing. So I already have this preloaded as well, uh, which is this guy. Let me just hit refresh here. All right, so this is what the interface is. This is just a plain vanilla uh, WordPress install, and I've added the plugin, um, and I've added a zip file of the updated version of my package. So, and you can see there it says RMATE is the package name and the version, and um, you can hit a flag to require a license or not. Um, there are some various settings that you can change, and, um, and that is wonderful. Um, I would note, if you are gonna really try this out though, um, this looks like you would be able to upload a zip file, but you actually cannot, or at least I could not. Um, I, <laughs> if you try to upload it, it will fail. Instead, you have to follow their plan B, which is just upload a zip file to this location on your web server, and, um, and that does work fantastically well. So that's, that's all I did after I installed. I just uploaded a zip file and called it good. So you might start to ask yourself, well, if all you did was uploaded this rmat.zip, how does it know that the name is rmat and the version is this and then so on? And that is because this plugin is so cool, it is opening up that zip file behind the scenes and it's finding your plugin header, it's finding your readme.txt and it is pulling that data out. And so it's pulling that out here as a summary, but it's also displaying that information when you go to view those plugin details in your real WordPress site. So let's give that a shot. Um, I'm just gonna hit refresh here. So again, I've replaced this plugin code with code that is talking to that server. Um, and let me just briefly show you how that code looks. So this is the updated version of this RMAT 1.0. And you'll see everything is exactly the same except for right here. And this is the, the code that is, uh, once again, just loading the file that they're telling us to in their documentation. They say, load this file in your WordPress plugin and then it's making that request to tell it, hey, plugin, you know, turn on and, and do your thing. Here's some information about me, the plugin. Um, I want you to, I have my server at this URL, and here's some information about my file name. There's some weird string replace stuff in here. That's because I'm on Windows, and there's a problem with that. But that's a bigger discussion. Um, <laughs> this plugin has, has a bug with running on a, on a Windows machine, which is the only reason there's some weird code right there. But anyway, so, you will see that it is saying, um, it is recognizing that there is an update available. So let's go ahead and um, uh, it is also adding this check for updates link, which is kind of weird, but I will hit update now after I close this because I've learned my lesson in practice. All right, update now. And it does indeed, oh, what? Well, it's supposed to update. I swear it did earlier today. So <laughs> let's, 
Yeah, there you go, there you go. So um, I guarantee you that is a, a product of me being on, on, like running this on a local environment and probably a Windows thing. Um, but let's pretend that that worked. And uh, if I hit view details on this rendition of this, oh, um, oh okay, <laughs> hold on. I know what to do. You wanna hear a pirate joke? What happens when a red pirate ship runs into a blue pirate ship? Everyone gets marooned. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, let me hit refresh. All right, if I hit view details, we'll see now there's some more stuff coming in, and that's because this is indeed pulling that information from the readme.txt that we put together. Now I should note, I'm doing all the stuff in that readme.txt that I would do if it was in the plugin directory, including I've made some pretty little banners and icons and things like that, um, but those aren't showing up. But a lot of stuff is, um, including, let's see, I don't think, yeah, the screenshots one is not working on this. So it seems to, to work for everything except for graphical parts of this, um, of this readme thing. And I've, I have tried many ways to get it to recognize those um, with, without luck. So that is um, another way that we can do this thing. Uh, so let me pull up um, my third example here, which is the throw money at the problem solution. And I, again, I highly recommend if you are doing a, a real deal commercial plugin and you wanna have license keys and keep track of that stuff, um, where you've only got updates coming through if uh, someone's license is valid for a year and that sort of thing, this is absolutely bar none the way to do it. Um, I'll, I, I don't have a live example of this one to go through, but from the, um, I just know Easy Digital Downloads is one of those um, Top Gun plugins that, that is amazing and uh, it does indeed handle all of this. You can kind of see the screenshots up there. Um, there's all these details on license and how to generate the licensing. There's an API, so say for instance you have um, after a payment completes on your site, someone's actually bought your plugin, it can trigger an API thing that'll generate a new license and then that'll do something. Um, and then down here, yeah, it handles renewals. Um, it also has, yeah, there's different paths to upgrade for if there's you know, different numbers of sites and for licensing. Uh, it's very, very detailed. And then down here, the part I was curious about is the it does add one-click updates to your WordPress plugins. Oh, and it supports themes too. So you could do this with a custom theme. Um, and again, just like all the other code we've been looking at, uh, it does have this, um, you include a line of code, you pass in some information in your plugin, and that's it. It's real simple, just a couple lines, and it just goes. All right, so now let's talk about the final solution that I have in place, which is the culmination of my journey with this. Uh, let me load up that example here. So this one was, um, you will note, again, we only have one extra PHP file um, in here. I, I do have this up on GitHub, and there's a link to it at, at the end for you all to use. It's all open source. Um, so you just have to include this one little file into your, your plugin, and um, it is based on the work of this individual who has um, really gone through, he starts by talking about stuff that sucks, that's wonderful, um, but he really dug into um, you know, what are, um, all of the things that WordPress looks for. What are all the hooks that, and the details and the data that it can show um, on say like that little pop-up window that we're looking at. And so it was really great to have this, um, this reference. So he's pointing out all the different little data points in his code. Um, and what was interesting is in his example, uh, oh and he also explains the details of it too. So for a list of contributors on the side of your um, plugin information, you know, you What's interesting is that instead of a um, server, the, which is a, um, you know, it's all PHP, all this stuff, he says, you know what, forget the server, I just need a JSON file living on the web somewhere. 
And as long as I keep that JSON file up to date, it'll know if my plugin's up to date or not. It's kind of like the very first solution we we're looking at where things were kind of hard coded in the version number and all that. So I thought, well, that's very interesting. So I kind of took all of the stuff we've been looking at and I've um, put together my own plugin solution where on the, hold on a moment. On this side of things, the uh, WordPress side, again, you just include the plugin, the um, class file, and you instantiate it with the version and the URL and this, this basic stuff we've been looking at. And um, there's one more step to hit run, just because I, I don't believe in having um, classes just start messing around with WordPress unless you exactly tell them to. Uh, and then on the server side, um, I, I won't go into the code here, but uh, it really just does the same thing as that WordPress we looked at, where it looks at the zip files that, or the zip file that you have for your plugin, it digs in there, it pulls open the readme.txt, and then it displays all that information um, to, to the user. Uh, and as well, it also supports those wonderful little icons and banners and things like that. So here's, that's pretty small, my apologies, but I have a folder here for assets where you can upload banners and screenshots and that sort of thing. I have another folder here for releases where you can have multiple versions of your plugin of all time, which allows you, and it's also passing that version to WordPress, so it has some context of what previous versions were. Um, and so normally this would be called rmatey.zip. Here I have rmatey 1.0.0, rmatey 1.1.0, and so on and so on. And so it's using that pattern to determine what the most recent version is um, and what file to, to dig into. So that's kind of the, the behind the scenes of it. Uh, let's see it in action. I'll hit refresh here. And again, if I hit um, view details now, there we go. We've got a galleon. And we have all the contributors. We have a donate link, please. We have uh, installation information uh, and so on. Screenshots, we've got screenshots. It's like a real plugin. And it is so cool. It tells you why you should update. And even more, if I go to this page over here. Yeah, check again. You know you want to update. There we go. I get an icon. It is so cool. All right. So let me close out of this jabroni. And let's make a gamble on if it will work or not when I hit update. Select all plugins. Do you believe? Updated successfully. Yay. Hooray, huzzah. All right, so there you have it. That is the, oh, my apologies. It's a really important slide. I better get the right one up, hold on. Come on, buddy, not that one. Everyone's seen my Tinder profile, okay. Everyone except my wife, let's go. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So there are some further resources available. First of all, you can get these slides in a cross-platform PDF format. And all of the files that I have, including my um, test-ish versions of all the different server sides of things, um, on um, all here, it's, it's just a link to a GitHub uh, account there. Uh, and that also includes a link to the MyWay version of the plugin update server and some documentation, how that works. Um, updated at 1 a.m. last night. And uh, some other general details, such as in information on the semantic versioning. Um, the WordPress plugin developer handbook, which I, I didn't show up here, but uh, it has all this great information on just all the stuff that you really should be doing for your plugin if it were going to go in the regular directory, including things like um, image dimensions for those banners and icons, and it supports SVG, so does my plugin. Um, readme specs, um, there's a little shortcut to just generate a readme.txt file because they're very large and there's a lot of stuff in there, so it's nice to, nice to have a helping hand. Uh, obligatory link to piratejokes.net, which, forgive me, has not been updated in many years. I hope you enjoy the Flash header on that website. Uh, and if you really want to get into the super geeky stuff, um, you can actually see all of those individual data points that, it, um, that WordPress is using to make that little information modal 
console window, um, if you go into this file, wp admin slash plugin dash install dot php, and the function is called install plugin information, and it's got all the stuff listed out there. Uh, so there you have it. Um, I hope you found this useful, and um, if you like this presentation, my name is, again, is Mike Kerkis. If you did not enjoy this presentation, then my name is Alex Vesquez. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any time for some questions? What's that? Oh, certainly. There you go. Anybody? Any questions? All right. I've all left you all in amazement. Or you're ready for some, some karaoke. You got questions? Uh, yeah. So you mentioned you've made the uh, switch with the themes. Mm -hmm. I have not. But um, that easy digital downloads one totally covers that situation. Um, that other WordPress one, I, I, my second solution here, also covers um, themes as well and version updates and so on. It's very similar, just different function names. Yeah. You over there. Just to do it? I would or say for, for this is a very selfish presentation why? because yeah. it's it's a problem I had to solve. And in my case, it's for a plugin that applies to a bunch of people, but not everybody. So it didn't make sense to be on the, the public store. But we're not charging people for the plugin. And because of that, for us, we would rather have a um, a more programmy way to just upload sure. a zip file to a server and forget about it. As long as that zip file exists, sure. everything updates and plugin updates go out to everyone and so on. Right. So that works for us because we're not asking people to pay for a premium plugin. Right. But if we were, I would skip all this malarkey and just go with right. the easy digital downloads one and um, and get that thing set up. Okay, so yeah, I guess even furthermore the question is, is uh, it doesn't do anything, your plugin doesn't do anything different, it's just leaner. Right, right? It's yeah, just, okay. the overhead is almost zero with, with mine, but it gotcha. doesn't support all the licensing keys and all that sure, kind of stuff. So it. it's a lot of extra features that are wonderful if you need them in easy to download. Gotcha, cool. EDD. Anyone else? No? All right. Well, thank you very much. I think we have, um, we have a wrap up in what, 10 minutes? Yeah, 520 in the beach. Be all right. Closing remarks. I'll see you at the beach. <laughs>